What's good, you YouTube? It's Mirror Boy Squidward back in another Squid Ale. We are less than two weeks away from the release of Phantom Nightmare, and yeah, the meta's about to shift. But boy, is this crazy. People are already experimenting with a new variety of secret tech cards. It seems like every week this just changes, but some of these are really, really clever. And guys, like, let me know what you think about these cards. Without further ado, I wanna show you guys what the heck people are testing right now, because these are pretty spicy. Starting at the top, you guys remember the Wind Barrier statue that's currently banned because it was abused in flu? Yeah, well, it turns out the Dark Barrier statue of the Abyss is just as playable. This is a level four fiend dark type that says neither player can special summon monsters except for dark monsters. And guess what? It actually slots quite well into an existing deck. And this has actually been legal for the longest time, this certain combo that we're gonna talk about, but people are only catching on to it now because, you know, Labyrinths have actually gotten some new toys in the form of transaction rollback. But specifically speaking, Ariane the Labyrinth Servant. No, not Ariana. This is the other Ariane the Labyrinth Servant that's actually the red one, which says, uh, you can send one normal trap card from your hand or that set on your field to the graveyard. Special summon one level four fiend monster from your deck in defense position, except Ariane. So guess what, guys? This is actually a level four fiend type that you can summon off of Ariane at some point throughout your combo, which is a lot easily uh, made to be set up now that Big Welcome Labyrinth can be comboed off with Transaction Rollback. So you can use multiple effects of Big Welcome Labyrinth per turn because again, Transaction Rollback's effect in the graveyard only copies the effect. That means it doesn't have any activation restrictions because you're not activating a second copy of Big Welcome Labyrinth. You're just copying the effects. So that makes it really, really easy for us to set up a bunch of Labyrinth monsters onto the board, including at some point the Ariane, the Labyrinth Servant, and we can easily either send a trap from our hand or that's reset on the field using one of the Labyrinth's effects. You know, we have a bunch of different Labyrinth's effects that allow us to recur different resources, the furniture cards, and of course the uh, lovely Labyrinth, which allows you to reset a normal trap card. So that just fulfills the conditions and the cost of this card. We bring out the Dark Barrier statue and boom, it's very, very hard for fire decks to deal with this. Yes, there are actually cr a couple of ways that you can make do with the Dark Restriction. And one of it is actually Debell Star of the Black Witch, who happens to be a Dark, as well as going into Link Karibo and then possibly Esp Little Knight. Cause again, you know, being Dark, you get to banish something. But of course, anytime that you are setting up the Dark Barrier statue with the Labyrinth combo, you're not gonna care about, you know, a measly SP Little Knight. You're gonna be easily able to interact with it and stop them before they actually get the bodies on board to go into I, uh, SP. So it, it just makes it so it's basically a Fossil Diana that makes Fire Decks unable to play. And the nice thing about this card is it's not even that bad to draw going second. I mean, I'm envisioning a full setup board by the Fire Kings where they have a bunch of stuff in the graveyard. You know, they have maybe like the uh, Karunix in the graveyard. They have the Princess Chilling in the graveyard. And I just go, you know what? I'm gonna normal summon the Barrier Statue of the Abyss and then start playing my Labyrinth combos. And you know, you can't really interact with this as a Fire King player. I was thinking you really can't pop anything because you're not special summoning anything. You might have like Appaloosa on the board, which is fine as long as we can deal with that. You can't trigger Kieran in the hand to special either because he's a fire monster. So like Baron Statue of the Abyss actually has a lot of application when we're going to a specific attribute uh, dominated format, right? So. This one is really, really cool. It's currently legal even pre-Phantom Nightmare. You can use it with Maze of Millennia. And I'm surprised not a lot of people have caught on to this, but I'm just like reading these cards and I'm like, you know what? The bear statues are really broken. Guys, if you're playing Labyrinth, test this out because you can technically bring it out in engine now with Ariane and the Labyrinth Servant, which is really, really neat. Uh, yeah, I hope I do not stare at this across the table. Moving on is another cool one. I know some people have already been talking about this, but Cyframe Gear Delta. This is somewhat popular in the OCG. People are playing two copies of Delta side decking alongside the one copy of Gamma. Yes, Gamma is currently limited in both the OCG and the TCG for good reason. This card is absolutely broken, guys. Like, I hated when this card resolved on me, especially when it was resolved on my opponent's turn, so they had two bodies to link off with. Just way too broken, okay? But now you can play two copies of Delta and one copy of Gamma, meaning you can sack your opponent super hard with Gamma. Uh, God, Gamma resolving nine times out of 10, you're gonna win the duel, because it negates the effect and it destroys the monster. So like, Fire King players are not gonna be leaving their bodies on the field. If you actually use Gamma against like a Snake Eyes Ash, the implication of that is just so huge, because not only do you negate the effect, but you also get rid of the body. So they're not gonna be able to use the effect to tribute later on, and they're losing a body to Link Climb. And on top of all that, if you happen to have it during your turn, you can actually resolve it against something like a Droll Lockbird. If you go like, okay, I'm gonna activate Bonfire Surge, you're gonna Droll me, okay, I changed Side frame gear gamma it's just game right but better yet delta serves as a replacement copy of gamma it's slightly worse but it's still really really high impact this format because there are a lot of high impact spell starters for example bonfire right and the weird thing about this format specifically is the fact that sequencing is really important because of the existence of cards like drone lockford already in the format 
which means if a player opens something like a bonfire and a snake eyes ash, nine times out of 10, they're gonna summon the snake eyes ash first, right? The player on droll, cause this is better. If we go like bonfire, add snake eyes ash and you get drolled, well then I don't get any value out of the snake eyes ash by normal summoning it, right? So this is why players will be activating bonfire is their first action, which means that it's probably one of their only starters. So when you hit them with a Delta, it's especially high impact, right? This is not just like a reinforcement of the army. The fact that it's once per turn and the fact that Drone Lockbird exists means that they have to sequence their plays weird. If you're activating bonfire as your first action, that probably means that that's your main starter, right? Uh, beyond something like a witch, maybe, that they might or might not have. So that's why it's really high impact. The other nice thing is that a lot of people are playing Triple Tactics Talent, and this card really punishes you for playing hand traps, right? If I open multiple hand traps and I go like Baylor and then they go triple attack this talent, steal your nib or rip your ash out of your hand. And I'm just like, well, that sucks. But now if you have Delta combined with another hand trap, you can just hand trap freely because you don't care about talents. If they go talents, I'm gonna chain the Delta and then get rid of it, right? So it just does a lot of things. You know, they're not gonna be able to draw off the talents. And if they rip my hand, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna use Delta. So that still trades with the hand trap one for one, but I don't get to reveal to them my hand, which is important knowledge, right? So it does a lot. I think there's so many cool things that you can hit in the format, like high impact spells, uh, tactics, rust, for example, that people are playing. And a lot of the starters, again, are spells. So this card just does a lot for you. You. and I love how this card just interacts in the format. One thing to note is that you cannot actually negate the spell card effects. So if there's already like a Fire King Island on the table, you're not gonna actually be able to act, uh, activate in response to the effect to pop because it only negates the activations of spell cards from their hand. So just be very cautious of that, whether you're playing Delta or you're on the receiving end. But so far I've been testing this card and I actually really, really like it. It's one of those high impact cards because it trades one for one with the card that you're trying to stop. The only caveat is you have to play Cyframe Driver, which is a very, very big burden. If you draw this card, you're probably gonna lose the duel. So this is the struggle that you have to deal with, but I still think the cards are really good, guys. Only going second though, I don't want them in my hand going first because they're not gonna do anything when I have monsters on the table. So guys, uh, test out Delta and let me know how you feel about the card. Is it good or is it bad? Let us know. Really quickly, if you guys aren't already subscribed to the channel, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button at the bottom. It'll go a long way to support the channel. Other than that, thanks a lot for tuning in. Moving on, this is a card that I was sort of reading. You know, obviously when the Fire King cards came out, you have to read the old cards to make sure that there's a synergy. You know, you're covering all your bases. Are there any other cards that are good in the old uh, support? And the original Fire King Kieran is actually not bad. It says, uh, it's an extender. If a Fire King monster you control is destroyed by a card of Egg Special Net. But the most important fact is, if this card is destroyed and sent in the graveyard, you can send one Fire Monster from your deck to your graveyard. Meaning you can foolish any Fire Monster in tandem from your deck with Big Daddy Garunix. And then of course we have Promethean Princess, so we can actually resurrect any Fire Monster. So all things considered, you're basically able to special summon a Fire Monster from your deck or foolish any Fire Monster from your deck. What does that mean? Well, this is especially useful because there are a lot of Fire Monsters that take advantage of themselves when being sent to the graveyard. For example, you can bridge into the Volcanic Engine. You know, you can get Volcanic Shell, but better yet, if you're uh, a slow player and you happen to go to time, you can Volcanic Slatter Shot for 500 damage direct to your opponent. So this kind of creates that burn win scenario again. And then on top of that, you can do some cool things. You can dump a fire statue, bear statue of the infernos. We just talked about the dark one, but this guy you can dump. Then you can use princess to resurrect him. And then you have a fossil dina that is one-sided. So if you're playing against a non-fire deck, this could be very, very high impact. And then of course, well, we talked about this in the clickbait thumbnail, but searching Ash, yes, how do you search Ash? Well, you just have to burn the Fire King Avatar Kirin, destroy it, and then send the Ash Blossom from your deck to your graveyard. And thanks to our link toolbox that we have, there are a lot of ways to add back that card that we send. So we do have Salivan Great Sunlight Wolf. We can just add the Ash back to our hand. So if Branded becomes really, really popular, this could potentially be something you can side just for the Branded matchup to guarantee that you have the Ash Blossom against the Branded Fusion at all times, because we're just foolishing the Ash Blossom Awesome. adding it back either off of the Salomon Great or you can add it off something like a Doolittle Chimera if you happen to run that and you can just pop it. And it just means that any fire monster is searchable from our deck. Any fire monster is uh, can be sent to the graveyard directly from our deck and any fire monster can be special summoned from our deck in tandem with Princess. So this is just something that I thought was really, really neat how Garunix can basically dump the Fire King Avatar Kirin, and then Kirin can dump any fire monster. You can also dump uh, a variety of other fire monsters. So guys, scan the dueling book uh, toolbox and let me know if there are any fire monsters that we can also send off of that. Moving along is another Fire King based card, but Rekindling. 
A lot of players forgot about this, but I saw some people testing this and I'm just like, this card says special summon from your graveyard as many fire monsters as possible with 200 defense, but banish them during the end phase of the turn. And a lot of the new cards actually have 200 defense. Of course, the older ones like Fire Car uh, King Avatar Arvada has 200 defense, but also the new Baby Bird Ponyx has 200 defense. The Kieran also has 200 defense and better yet, the Snake Eyes stuff like Populous has 200 defense. Oak also has 200 defense. So if you're playing into a board and you set up a bunch of resources and you just can't push back your opponent's board, all you have to do is keep playing until you fill your graveyard with like four or five monsters, activate Rekindling, and it's basically a free non-once per turn soul charge that doesn't cost any life points. Yeah, soul charge is banned for good reason, guys. So this is just really, really neat. Like obviously this card can break your hand because it's not really a starter. It requires you to already be playing in order to be live, but it's also searchable off Triple Tactics Thrust being a normal spell card. So maybe this is something that you just have in your repertoire in tandem with other high impact spell cards like Trophy Tactics Talent, as well as uh, other side deck cards like maybe Soul Release. And then Thrust just becomes like an all-in-one and conclusive package that allows you to do what you want. So, uh, I, I mean, I, I was testing Rekindling a little bit. Sometimes it's just a blowout. Other times it's not as lively as you'd think. But guys, what do you think about this card? Let me know because I think it definitely has some application being able to uh, resurrect your entire graveyard and just blow your opponent out, right? So just really, really cool. And then the last card I want to talk to you guys about is another one that's really neat. It's called Burning Draw. This is a Salomon Great card. It's always treated as a Salomon Great card. But better yet, this can be splashed into any deck going second against fire, I think, generically, because it says uh, if your opponent controls more cards than you do, target one link monster your opponent controls, draw cards equal to its link rating, uh, you can only activate this once per turn. Also, you cannot normal summon or special summon monsters the turn you activate it except fire monsters. So obviously this is only slot into a fire deck, but basically going second against your opponent, if they have something like an Appaloosa on the board, you can just target that and draw four cards. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Unfortunately, it does lock you in a fire monster, so you're not gonna be able to use some of the in-engine Snake Eyes extenders like the Debell Star of the Black Witch, but that's just something that you're gonna have to cope with. Are you gonna be able to uh, win by drawing four cards? Probably. So Burning Draw could definitely have some application. Now the drawback to this card is it targets the Link Monster and checks the Link rating. So if that monster disappears from the table upon resolution, you're not gonna be able to draw any cards. So it's probably not wise to target something like an Amblo Whale. It does backfire if your opponent just has a Fire Link Monster where that they can just chain Kirin and pop and then you don't get any draws and you're also locked out of your summons for the rest of the turn. So that's something you kind of have to experiment with. Maybe this is something you activate after the smoke is cleared and Kirin's already been activated, Princess is resolved, everything's gone. And and you're in the clear to target your opponent's link monster and draw multiple cards. But I just thought that was interesting that you can draw multiple cards. Unfortunately, you do get locked out, even if this card is negated, I believe. It's a lot like Brand Fusion being Ash. You know, you're not going to be able to summon uh, for the rest of your turn. So uh, yeah, this is how the card works, but I thought this is really, really spicy. Um, it's also a Salamander card, meaning if you're playing Salad for whatever reason, it can be searched off of cards like uh, Raging Phoenix in Engine, but it's potentially good. I mean, you can draw a bunch of cards, so if there's some way to abuse this card, it's also searchable off of Thrust, and the only real drawback is obviously the summoning condition, as well as being able to push it past a Link Monster that's gonna stay on the board for you to target, right? So uh, I thought that was really, really cool. Guys, what do you think about these tech cards that people are testing so far? Some of them uh, I discovered myself, so I'm really proud about that. But let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Are there any other good tech cards that we're missing out? Let us know and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for tuning in.